If your well water smells like rotten eggs every time you turn on the tap, you're not alone. That sulfur smell is more than just annoying. It can be unpleasant and in very high concentrations, it can even be bad for your health. The good news, there is a simple fix and that is hydrogen peroxide. With a simple hydrogen peroxide system, you can eliminate these very high levels of hydrogen sulfide for good and enjoy clean water throughout the house. Welcome back to Clean Water Made Easy. My name is Jerry Bolfin. I'm a WQA certified master water specialist and for over 30 years, I've helped thousands of homeowners fix their bad well water. Today, we're tackling one of the most common, but probably most annoying problems, which is hydrogen sulfide, rotten egg smell, and how you can use hydrogen peroxide to eliminate it for good. Let's get started. So you turn on your tap and boom, you smell that rotten egg smell. It can be particularly worse if the water has sat for a little while, also, you might notice it in the hot water and not in the cold, or you might notice in parts of the house and not other parts of the house. Either way, if you smell this sulfur smell, rotten egg odor, it's hydrogen sulfide. This is a very common issue in well water, and it, the hydrogen sulfide odor itself is a gas and is produced by various types of sulfur reducing bacteria, and in some cases, iron reducing bacteria. And basically what happens is this, these bacteria use the sulfur and sulfates in the water at, to digest for their metabolism. And in the process of living, growing and dying, they give off this hydrogen sulfide gas as a byproduct. And this typically occurs in deep wells with low oxygen content and also other oxygen starved environments such as your water heater. Since this is primarily caused by a bacteria, anytime there's a biofilm, that is these bacteria can live and grow and die and create a film inside your pipes, it's a, it's a more difficult problem to address. Hydrogen sulfide is present in wells with a low oxygen content. So usually you're talking about a deep well. And it also can be present in other low oxygen starved systems such as your water heater or in your plumbing system. Also, it can be more common when the water has sat for a while. That's why it's often a problem, say you go on vacation or you have a vacation home and you go first turn the water on, you get a lot of hydrogen sulfide, a lot of that rotten egg odor coming out. It's because the bacteria have had time to sit there undisturbed and multiply and give off this gas, this hydrogen sulfide gas. Also, it isn't just a cosmetic or aesthetic issue. Hydrogen sulfide also breaks down into sulfuric acid. So it can be a very corrosive problem. A lot of times with hydrogen sulfide, you'll see corrosion, particularly of brass fixtures, uh, but you can uh, often see a black uh, substance forming byproduct from this corrosion that goes happens with hydrogen sulfide. Another problem with it is at high concentrations, which is more unusual, normally, the concentration we're talking about is anywhere from like one to five parts per million, maybe 10 parts per million of hydrogen sulfide dissolved in the water. That's really, you know, smells horrible. But you can get concentrations that are really high, say 30, 40, 50, or even hundreds of parts per million. In that case, it is a health threat. And folks do develop olfactory distress, or in other words, they, they don't smell it after a while. If it's a mild problem in their home, they're, they're breathing this hydrogen sulfide, but they don't smell it anymore. They get used to it. And we often hear this many times, oh, when my mother-in-law comes over or when friends come over, they complain, oh, your house smells terrible. And it's because of that you can get used to it. So it is an issue that needs to be addressed. Unfortunately, it's easy to fix. And one of the best ways is with hydrogen peroxide. So the first step is to figure out, do you have it in the hot and the cold or just in the hot? Because a lot of times, it is just in the water heater. So you have some sulfur compounds or a decaying anode rod, and you have a reaction going on in your water heater where you get this rotten egg smell just in your water heater, but it's not in your normal cold water. And this can happen in city water as well. But um, then you would treat it differently. You can do a one-time shock or set up a, a little uh, system where you're putting in hydrogen peroxide, say every few months into your water heater. And this will instantly kill the odor in your water heater. If you have an easy way to introduce peroxide, then you can just buy the store-bought 3% you know, drugstore peroxide and add that into your water heater, turn the water back on, and it instantly will get rid of the odor, sometimes for weeks or months at a time. 
One thing to, to test for is before you pick your peroxide system is to do a general mineral test. It's really important to know the pH of the water, how acid or alkaline it is. If your water is slightly acidic or neutral, say around seven pH, then it's easier to treat than if your pH is very high. So a lot of times you run in situations where the pH of the water is very alkaline. So you have the sulfur odor and you've got high pH, say over eight, 8.5, then you know you're gonna be adding a lot more peroxide to the water because peroxide and chlorine is less effective at a higher pH, you need more of it. So let's talk about peroxide. Why does it work so well? Why do people like using hydrogen peroxide over chlorine? Because chlorine bleach, um, sodium hypochlorite, will also kill the rotten egg odor as well. So the main difference is with peroxide, once you add the peroxide into the water, say you set up a little injection pump, every time your well turns on, or if it's a flow sensor type, every time you use water, it puts in a tiny bit of peroxide into the water. Then what you're doing is, as soon as the peroxide enters the water, it breaks down right away into oxygen and water. So the peroxide immediately kills the odor and as and the byproducts are basically oxygen and water. So what you're getting is you don't get any residual. So with chlorine, when you're adding chlorine into the water, you're actually getting a chlorine residual uh, so it's sodium hypochlorite or calcium hypochlorite, but either way, you're getting some mineral, some extra elements putting into the water, whereas with peroxide, you're not. It's just very clean, and so it generally tastes better. The other thing is that with the, the way peroxide works is you're, it's injected in the water, it's oxidizing, it's an oxidizer. So it's a powerful oxidizer, which means it can break down organic matter. So if you think about it, the sulfur bacteria are using sulfur compounds in water to create this reaction, create this horrible sulfur smell gas. And so it's basically more environmentally safe. So you have a more of a system, you're not putting any chlorine residual going down your septic tank. You know, you're, you're basically in a way introducing oxygen into the water. A very common way to treat low levels of uh, hydrogen sulfide is to use aeration combined with catalytic carbon because when you inject air into the water if there's any dissolved oxygen in the water the catalytic carbon will instantly remove and eliminate this hydrogen sulfide odor problem but with aeration you're not getting it's not a strong oxidizer you know there's the oxygen in air is you know it's most air is mostly nitrogen so you're getting lower levels of oxygen and you're not getting a powerful it's powerful oxidizer, so it's not addressing that underlying nutrient problem for the bacteria. It's less effective at reducing the nutrients. So it's it's more common with aeration carbon systems to get this problem where the odor develops again in the pipes when you're gone. Because you're either way, you're not killing the bacteria. You're just trying to limit, you're getting rid of the hydrogen sulfide, getting rid of the odor, but you also want to have an environment where there's no um, nutrients left are available for these bacteria to grow and thrive. Okay, so let's talk about how it actually works. How do you use peroxide in your home well system? Like most folks, you have a, a well with submersible pump down in the well and a pressure tank and then it goes in your house. So there's no like storage tank or aeration tank. Just have a, a, a well and a pressure tank. Then you wanna set up a little pump and solution tank where it every time the well runs, it injects a little bit of hydrogen peroxide in the water before your pressure tank. There's a rule of thumb, generally, you wanna put in about two parts per million of peroxide for every one part per million of hydrogen sulfide that you have. And there are hydrogen peroxide test kits that we offer to our customers when they get it, which makes it very easy. They can test, oh, I've got this much residual. You generally don't want any residual in the house. And it's basically all these systems are easy to adjust. So you adjust the, how fast the pump is pumping the peroxide into the water. You can also adjust the solution strength, how strong a solution you're using. And this is all covered in I mean, whoever you get a system from, this is all covered in the installation instructions. Like they recommend, okay, this is how you set it up. Here's your solution strength based on how many gallons a minute your well pump puts out and all this. It's very easy to set up, but it is a bit of a trial and error and you can adjust it because the goal is to have the peroxide do the job but it's not cheap, so you, you want to do it as 
little as possible. I can't tell you exactly how much folks spend, but I think the average is $10, $15 a month, probably for the peroxide. Um, depends on how bad their the, the self rotor is and how much water they use. So if you use a lot of water and you have very high levels of hydrogen sulfide, sometimes it does pay to try to get the 35% dangerous to use uh, solution because it's it's very, you have to be very careful with the very strong stuff because it can explode. You want to generally 7% is considered safe and it's very easy to ship. So you pay a little more for it, but in general, it's a lot easier. Peroxide has to be made fresh regularly. So in other words, if you're using um, 7%, say it comes in one gallon or five gallon bottles, you would make up and you want to dilute that, say one to with one part of peroxide to say four gallons of water, which is typical. Um, you wouldn't want to make up enough to last for six months or 12 months because after a few months, three, four or five months, it's going to just be water. There won't, it won't be peroxide anymore. It's just going to be water. So because uh, it does break down it that's an advantage of it it doesn't last very long so it, it decays quickly so that's good when you're injecting the water bad if you're buying the stuff and then using too much of it at once so that's another thing to know about hydrogen peroxide injection is that it's very easy to do but we generally tell folks try to time it so you're adding fresh peroxide every couple months if you can i mean if you could do it every month is best but at least every two to three months. And then the other thing that's really important is don't leave it in the sun. If it's in the sun, if it's really hot, then it's gonna decay a lot faster. So after the peroxide is injected into the water, some folks, that's all they do. They just literally just get the peroxide system. The sulfur is gone. They don't care about the sulfides or any other sediment from the process. And they just adjust it so they don't notice the peroxide in the house. However, what we recommend is if folks get a a type of backwashing carbon filter after the peroxide. So after your pressure tank, you get a small tank with one or two cubic feet of a special type of activated catalytic carbon, meaning that if there's peroxide in the water, meaning there's a lot of dissolved oxygen in the water, it will form a um, high level oxidation will happen on the, the surface of the, the carbon as opposed to regular carbon. What's really great is, is that it'll just last for years. In other words, the if you had regular carbon, uh, especially if you had hydrogen sulfide and just tried to use carbon to remove it and didn't use peroxide, it might last like a month. But if you have uh, peroxide or aeration and catalytic carbon, you can get years out of it. It'll last for three, four or five years uh, before you have to dump it out and add more carbon. So it's very convenient as opposed to using a cartridge, which might have to fight every few months. So that's what we recommend having the peroxide injection system and then a backwashed kettle of carbon filter. Okay, well, we covered a lot here very quickly, but bottom line is if you have that terrible sulfur smell, a good way to deal with it is with hydrogen peroxide because it doesn't put any chemicals in the water and it eliminates the nutrients that the bacteria thrive on. So in a way you're kind of, you're not disaffecting the water, but you're eliminating the problem with the bacteria so it can't regrow in the house. If you have any questions, just give us a call or email us or put a comment down below. In the next video, we're going to go over more about how you can use hydrogen peroxide for your well system.